Welcome back to No Cap Room here on the Ball Don't Lie podcast, where yesterday, Tuesday, the in-season tournament. Nope, just kidding. It's now the Emirates NBA Cup. Are Money, you excited? please, Emirates. Give it to me, too. We're talking about the we're using the proper name. Hit us off. I don't even know what the IST was. That doesn't even exist. I anymore. don't know her. I was in Vegas for last year's championship and semifinal of what is now the Emirates NBA Cup. And I am curious to see what next year's iteration will bring. We've got the groups. We've got the schedules. Let's break every and single game down, Jake. Let's go. That's not what we're going to do. We're just going to no, quickly say what we liked from year one and what we'd like to see going forward. I have been staunchly supportive of the grotesque courts. I think they're hideous, <laughs> but I think they're awesome. I think I remember when we talk about weddings and watching shows in the hotel room, being in D.C., old college buddy who's in the Celtics group chat. We were getting ready for the Friday night welcome dinner, and the lady friend comes out of the bathroom putting the makeup on she sees a giant purple wooden floor and she goes what's that i saw it's phoenix and they're hosting a game for what is now called the emirates nba cup and she was like huh but that's it just just to draw the attention i thought it was good i would like the courts to stay i don't know if they if they will stay we did some reporting that the, the paint was a little bit tricky and oily and ruined the court in Dallas, but I would like the paint to stay. Dan? Yeah, there there were some players. I know Jalen Brown had talked about slipping on it, and so there was some concern about uh, were those because of the the paint, because of the whatever else, like that maybe they were not as uh, not as as safe or you know. So hopefully, whatever the iterations of it that they would use this time are. You know, the the grip is the same as the regular night to night floor, but I'm with you. I mean, even just from a like a dopey perspective of later in the season, you go back and you're like watching film from old games or you're pulling up every pick and roll this guy ran or whatever. And you get mm -hmm. to one of those and you're like immediately like, oh, that was that was from then. Or you're watching a highlight and you're like, that was from, you know, the the during the tournament and it instantly identifies it. So, yeah, it, it has the like the the benefit of drawing the eye of a passerby if you're fl you know, flicking channels and you're like, what the hell is that? Also, it makes it sort of easy to categorize it in your brain. So, you know, immediately it was from this other thing. And so if you're trying to establish this other thing as like this new, you know, enterprise as different and categorize it in a particular way, it instantly sort of files it away in your brain that way. Also, the Pelicans had a skeleton Pelican called a Skeleton on their court that I thought was really cool. And I'd like to see more of that guy. I want to be friends. Any changes you would like to see going forward? I don't know. I, it seemed like a lot of people were complaining about the point differential component. I, I mean, this is, I kind of, I liked it. I wound up enjoying I that like it, it led too. to like some drama on the last night of the group play games where it's like, you had, and I know you reported on that. You were with the nets, I believe, right. When they were sort of, I was there scoreboard watching. And there was a question of, you know, is the, are the, the you know, Celtics going to get through? Are they going to get through? Like, and I, I, I guess the main thing to me for change, or, you know, changes, like, I don't, I don't think they'll necessarily do it because they're essentially still regular season games. Right. But like, I would kind of like to see it lean even further into the game being different. Like yes. we just got done with the Olympics and FIBA rules, 40 minute games. Like how nice is it? That those games are over in two hours. Um, Sick. how nice is Let's it? that? Forget about just in-season tournament games. Let's do that for all the games. <laughs> right. And like the the style of play, the flow of it, like the swallowed whistles, the increased physicality, like the the decreased stoppages, like the idea. I, I'm not saying go full like every idea we've had for the all-star game in the G League, put it all in now. But like you don't need to have the Elam ending instead of overtime to be like, well, it's to be, like set this up yeah. as a different thing. I understand they're probably not going to do it because these are still regular season games and they count in the regular season standings. So you, you still need to have some level of uniformity there, but I would be open to like, to feel free to get weirder with this. And let's like, understand it is a weird thing that is different, 
Let's let mm-hmm. it be different. But uh, I, I mean, that that's that's as far as I would go in time. Yeah. Specific changes. I feel like I'm not creative enough to. I thought this was going to suck. I was like, I think it's going to be boring. I don't think it's going to be interesting. I don't think it's going <laughs> to add stakes. It's just going to be regular yeah. December games. And I was wrong. So they clearly know something better than I do. Yeah, I will say like being on the ground for the finals, ostensibly, you got the perfect outcome possible. You got legacy legendary player LeBron in big ass market Lakers near Las Vegas, which has always categorically been a Lakers town. Right. So close to LA driving flying distance. Plus like young upstart team that has something to play for, even though they're not really a title contender in the young Tyrese Halliburton led Indiana Pacers who then use that momentum and get to the Eastern conference finals. Like that is exactly i think what the league would have wanted and the league everyone just kind of forgot about it like a week later the lakers basically said it hurt them (laughs) going all out for that so i i would want it to be different from the games you just i don't i don't think these have to be regular season games and i'm taking I'm, i'm i'm taking what you said I want it to be drastically different. I want it to be first to 100. No clock. Mm. Just something that is... Because we're not getting single elimination in these games from the start, which you know we don't in the Olympics, right? This, this formula is almost identical to what the Olympics were, where you had your 12 groups instead of 30. But then after that, like you get eight teams in the knockout round. And it follows almost the exact same format. So it's similar to what we see in FIBA play already. But if you're going to stick it with that, the point differential thing, just like it needs to be hammed up more. Like we need graphics after every game. Like here's now where the point differential stands. Like that was what made it so fun that last night watching three games at once and be like, oh, if you carry the one and minus the two and this three here, like right. that to me brought so much extra juice. So if you're not, if you're going to make these games be standard 48 minute games, standard regular season games, the only bells and whistles are that there's a fun court and these games count twice. Like you need to make the counting twice feel more, feel twice the weight, feel like these games count twice as much instead of just, oh, well, we won our first game and then we lost our second, but oh, now now game three, if we do this, this, and this, which may be year two, people will be feeling more, they'll have more familiarity with it. That can change. But I am with you. Make it as weird as possible. Make them not regular season games because the whole point of like making them, you're getting the game, you're getting the gate revenue, you're getting the TV money. So what's the point of it tallying to the 82 count anymore, in my opinion? And make it count just a game to a hundred. It's not Elon ending. It's not target score. It just like is the game from the jump. And it brings that pickup element into it, which is like where these guys really thrive. Like the best competition is when these dudes all go to LA and work out with Rico Hines and they're mm-hmm. playing one to eleven. Like do it on a national stage with a TV broadcast, one to a hundred. 25 that's when you go to commercial and bring it back that's my that's my take i like it i mean i don't know i i'm i think i i have to acknowledge like my instinct on these things is a little more traditional than i would even that, that i would like to admit that i'm like the game is cool i like the sport i don't necessarily need it to be wildly different play nba basketball with you know like giving a shit and i'll probably dig it but then the things that have changed, you know, the introduction of the the uh, the play-in tournament, the introduction of the in-season tournament, these tweaks, it, in the context of like an all-star game, I really don't care because that be- it happens in like a parallel universe that doesn't count for anything. And it's just supposed to be like a sideshow. So kind of who cares? But games that actually do matter, I've enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm willing to, I'm willing to keep an open mind and give the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, like the, you, to the, you hammer your point, it provided an opportunity to mint a new star in the NBA, to introduce an exciting young player to a large national audience and get and make people care about who Ty- Tyrese Halliburton is. And give us the first chapter of Bucks Pacers. 
the rivalry continues wound up being a whole friggin thing and then also paid off in a playoff series right and so there's you know it, there was that there was you had this mix of teams where yeah there is the blue bloods you, as you mentioned there's the lakers were there the celtics were there the knicks not a blue blood but like a traditional like a team a, a, a like public team that you know the people pay attention to and res- a resurgent one but then it's also like Get introduced for a game to the Kings. Get introduced for a game to the Pelicans. Figure out what's going on with the Pacers. There were, there were, it, it was a more of a hodgepodge and also a little bit of like, this is another way to put teams that maybe don't always get as much national attention in front of a big national audience. Now, some of them kind of pooped the bed, like the Pelicans against the Lakers. But then also that gives you a story to then track as you go forward. That like a big part of the rest of the Pelican season was how they bounced back from there. Big part of Zion's season was how he responded to the public criticism of, of his game and his weight and his fitness and everything like that. So like it does give you more to get a handle on. And so I think it turned, I, I don't know what the ratings were like. I don't know what kind of revenue it drove. I would say, I think it was from a, narrative for structure. Emirates to throw a big bushel of money at the league. Yeah, I mean, it, it, right. It, it, you would imagine they would not have done that had it not been successful in some capacity in terms of drawing eyeballs and generating interest. But I do know that it. I think from a narrative perspective, it gave you some more things to have a handle on and it gave you opportunities to like the fact that LeBron James took it seriously made it so that everybody else would take it a little more seriously. They didn't take the banner part seriously, but the games themselves, it took more seriously. And I think more of that across the NBA landscape is probably a pretty good thing. Probably a pretty good thing. 